Uh, Alright, so if we look at these here, if they are like radicals, we're just adding the numbers in front of them. So if I look here, here is a square root of 11. Notice how we have another square root of 11 here. <clears throat> we can combine those into one term. So we have a positive 5 in front of the first one, a negative 8. So if I do a 5 and a negative 8 and I combine them, that should give us a negative 3. And then the square root of 11. If we then look at the other ones, we have a square root of 3. And then we have another square root of 3. Those are like terms, like radicals, so we can combine those. So you take the positive 6, the negative 19, combine those to give you a negative 13, and then that common radical of root 3. <clears throat> It's bigger for people out here. All right, so pretty easy. Number two, also easy. The reason I give you a couple of these back to back, even a number four, just understand if I give you a root two, it's kind of like if I gave you 8x plus x, that should be 9x. There, it's implied that there's a one in front of it. We just don't have to write the one. So just like this root two, it's implied there is a one right here. So you're going to do 8 plus a one, that's a nine, and then that common radical we leave alone. <laughs> All right. Same with number three. These are both root fives. There is a one in front of the first one. So one minus 10 is a negative nine. And then that common radical of root five stays the same. All right. Four. So you to think for what you get for four. And then, not a trick question. It really is that easy when I tell you to try number four. Number four is no different than if I gave you a regular six and told you to subtract a regular six. That has to be a zero, correct? So it's the same thing here. If I do a one root six and I subtract a one root six, that's a zero. You could put zero root six. This is not necessarily wrong. But anything times zero is zero, so it's unnecessary. All right, so we just want to go ahead and write that as a zero. <clears throat> Right. So right now we're thinking this is as easy as it could possibly get. You're probably right. But then we add the stuff from last night. So here's now where we want to make sure we understood what we did yesterday. Because if I look at number one, if I look at this radical and this radical, very clearly those are not like radicals. So right now we cannot add those. But what you'll notice now is these are a little bit bigger numbers. These look like your homework from last night when we can simplify these a little bit. So that's now what we're going to want to be able to do. So if I told you to simplify this, what we talked about yesterday, when we have that number in front, we're just going to drop that down. So I'm going to rewrite the 5. Since that is in a square root of 8, we want to come up with, if at all possible, two numbers that multiply to be 8, with one of them being our perfect squares. So our perfect squares are the 1, the 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, so on and so forth. All right, so 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, on down the line. So this should be a pretty nice one. If I look for root 8, you can't go too big because 8's not that big of a number. But pretty quickly, I would think we could come up with this 4 here and say that 4 times 2 would give us an 8. However, we still have this plus sign, and we need to do the exact same thing with 18. We now need to simplify 18. So do that real quick. Come up with two numbers that multiply to be 18 that are then part of our perfect square list that I have somewhat listed on the right. It's not complete, but it should be big enough currently for these two numbers. <clears throat> All right, Jennifer, what do you got up there, Jennifer? Good. So Jennifer says 9 and 2, for those who cannot hear at home. So 9 times 2 will give you 18. 9 is our perfect square. So then what we said over here, I'm going to drop this 5. I'm going to drop a root 4, but don't we know that the square root of 4 is a 2? So we're going to turn that into a 2. The square root of 2 we can't do anything with, so that stays the same. Plus the square root of 9 we now know is a 3. And then the square root of 2 we can't do anything with. Then notice, we really just have a 5 times a 2 out in front of the first one. So this is a 10 root 2 
plus a three root two. Took us a little while to get there, it took us a few steps to get there, but didn't these now simplify to give you like radicals, like the first four problems that we did? So now that they are both square roots of two, we actually can now add these together and get 13 of those. So that would then give us 13 root two. That's our completely simplified sum between those two numbers. Okay. All right, so two, we'll do this one again together and then I'll have you try number three here. So in number two, we're gonna rewrite the eight and then we're gonna try to simplify a 12. So we wanna come up with two numbers that multiply to be 12 with one of them being a perfect square. So again, I have this list, it's not complete on the right, but at least gets us through one and seven, one through seven. And I think most of us would probably get this anyway without me having to list those, you would use four and three. So that gives us our 12. Minus, we're going to drop that 5 down, and then now we want to come up with a square root of 48. If you did these last night, um, if you haven't waited, hopefully we're, we're getting to see that we want to go with the biggest perfect square possible. So it is very, very tempting, and I'll do it in red just so you don't do this right now. It is very tempting to use 4 and 12. <clears throat> That's probably the one that people would go with. Like 6 and 8 would, would give you 48, but 6 and 8 aren't listed. 4 and 12 will give you 48. 4 is obviously listed right here. However, look at that root 12. Root 12 is still a reasonably big number that could probably be simplified further. Because of that, what that probably means, there is a bigger perfect square that I could use to go into the 48. All right, and in this case, it is this guy. So if you did 48 divided by 16, so if I make this a 16, 16 times a 3 would give us 48. <clears throat> and then that 3 is a much smaller number. We can't do anything with it, so we know we have the biggest one. Now, I'm going to continue to be thorough here, and eventually we'll simplify this a little bit, but I'm going to drop that 8 down. The square root of 4 we know is a 2, so it's really 8 times 2. And then the root 3 we're going to rewrite. Can't do anything with it. Minus. The 5 comes down again. The square root of 16 we know is 4, and then the root 3 we rewrite. <clears throat> what we end up with in front of that first one is an 8 and a 2 getting multiplied together to give us 16 root 3s. In that second one, we end up with a 5 and a 4 getting multiplied together to give us a minus 20 root 3. Not shockingly, because that's kind of what we're doing right now as we learn this, those both end up being identical radicals. So we can go ahead and subtract. 16 minus 20 is a negative 4, and then we leave that root 3 alone. <clears throat> All right, getting it. All right, so what I want you to do, take a minute or two and see what you think about number 3. And again, I'll write them at the bottom of the page. Here's our perfect squares. So these are really the only numbers you want to experiment with to go into those two numbers. And once we get too big with these, well, I guess you got some bigger ones coming up, so I'll go and write them all up.
Let's see what we got here. So number three, we're going to drop that three down. And then Walker, what would you use for 24 Walker? Good. So we use six and four. I would recommend putting the perfect square first. So while you could put six and four, totally fine. Um, just as a rule, since we're going to be multiplying that when it becomes a nice a whole number again, um, put that first. So four and six minus, what do you get for 54 Walker? Good. So then you use nine and six for the 54. If you want to be good and thorough, continue to be thorough. What we eventually want to kind of graduate to is, isn't this really a three getting multiplied by a two? Because the square root of four is a two. So this is really just three times two, which is a six. And then the root six we're going to leave alone. And then the next one, this just becomes a three right away. We don't have to worry about multiplying by anything. And then our root six afterwards. Those end up being nice. Perfect square or um, identical square roots. So we can go ahead and combine those and get a three root six. All right. All right. Number four. Same thing. See what we can come up with. See if we can come up with these rules or the numbers. You're going to only use the numbers at the bottom. So we're going to do a four and then try to come up with two numbers to give you 125. And then minus a nine and then two numbers that will give you 80. With one of those two numbers being one of the highlighted perfect squares at the bottom of the paper. Let's see what we're coming up with here. One. Okay. Okay. So 125. Anything that ends in a five, there's not a whole lot of these numbers at the bottom of the paper that are highlighted as perfect squares that are going to go evenly into a five. There's really just one, and it's got to be that 25. So for 125, 25 is our number, and then if I did a 25 times a 5, it would have given me the 125. The 80 might have been a little bit harder. Your first thought may have been a 4 and a 20, because that will give you 80. But that 20 is a pretty big number. It's one that would simplify a little bit further. So hopefully we continued on and explored a little more, and we ended up with a 16 and a 5. If you look now, this is really a 4, and it's going to be getting multiplied. And then if we just understand the square root of 25 is 5, all we really have is a 4 times a 5, which would give you a 20, and then that root 5 would stay the same. In the next one, you have a 9 getting multiplied by a 4. The square root of 16 is a 4. 9 times 4 is 36, and then our root 5. Not coincidentally, since this is kind of what we're doing today, those end up being the exact same radical. So we can go ahead and combine those to be a negative 16 root 5. Okay? All right, good. good. All right, number five real quick. Let's go through this. I want to make sure we get to the next type of problem as well. So number five, same idea. 12 is going to be pretty easy. I think we would all get that as a 4 and a 3. The 8 and then root 8 would have to be a root 4 times a root 2. If we look at these two guys here, the square root of 4 is a 2. It's going to get multiplied by a 7. So this should be a 14 root 3. The next ones, this is really an 8 times the square root of 4, really an 8 times a 2. So that's 16 root 2. I'll give you this just so you understand. They don't always end up being the exact same radical. It's happening a lot right now because that's what we're learning. That's the new topic. But don't think they're always the same. 
when that happens, this is as far as we can go. That's going to be your final answer. A root three, root two cannot be combined. Next one. These guys. It says determine whether it is true or false that this expression is fully simplified. And it says if it is false, you're going to correct the error. So first and foremost, let's identify this is a cubed root of 8. I have another cubed root of 8. So the first thing we want to see is are those the same? And they are. They're both cubed roots, and we're taking the cubed root of 8. Because they are, we can go ahead and subtract those. So if I did a 5 minus a 4, that should give me a 1 cubed root of 8. We don't have to write the 1, so there's no issue with the paper not having a 1 written in, but if you wrote that, that is okay. So the question then is, is that our final answer? Is that what this is saying fully simplified? And in this case, hopefully we would say no. We were able to combine those but think about your perfect cubes yesterday. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, we'll do one more, 5 cubed is 125. So since this is now a perfect cubed, shouldn't the, per or the cubed root of 8 give us a 2? So that if I'm going to simplify this all the way, the cubed root of 8 is a good old-fashioned 2. Because that's what I cube to get an 8 is a 2. All right? You understand that? Can you go over that one more time? Yeah. Let me do this one. Let's say I gave, well, let's do this. Um, let me rewrite all of these over here. So perfect cubes. I mean, if I do a, the 1 multiplied 3 times, I'm going to get a 1. If I do 2 times 2 times 2, that's going to be an 8. Remember, the word cube means 3. So that's why I'm putting 3 in all of these. I don't see myself going much bigger than these, except for a 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 would be 1,000. Those would be the ones I would kind of want you to go to and know. So aren't all of these numbers gotten by taking the same number three times and multiplying them all together? So because of that, these over here are what we would call perfect cubes. What that then means is if I ever give you this question and I ask you what is the cubed root of one, it's asking you what number got multiplied by itself three times to give you a one. And it's got to be a one. If I give you a cubed root of 8, what that's asking you is, what number did I multiply by itself three times to get an 8? That has to be a 2. And then one more, just to beat the dead horse. If I ask you what a cubed root, oops, the blue though, what the cubed root of 27 is, what I'm asking you in this case is, what number did I multiply by itself three times in order to get a 27? That would have to be a 3. Okay. All right. So that's why the cube root of 8 then has to be a 2. All right. All right. So that's number 1. Uh, number 2 we should know. So see what you think about number 2. Answer that question real quick. The last one is not correct. These are both square roots. We don't have little index numbers in there. That means they're both two, though they're square roots. Can I simplify a square root of two and a square root of five? No. So this is completely simplified. There's nothing we need to correct. This guy's good to go. All right, one more. Then I want to make sure we get to the last thing that you need to see today. Um, so number three, let's simplify this like we did on the previous page. Oh, this is number three we didn't even do. Cross number three out because it's not even simplified. It's just another problem. Go to number four. This will actually answer the question. The square root of 10, even though that's a kind of big number, there is no number that multiplies by itself to give you a 10. So there's nothing we can really do with this. 
a root 90, that we can simplify with a perfect square. It would be a 9 times a 10. And we want to know, does that equal a root 10 if we simplify all of this? The first one, really, again, nothing we can do with that first guy. And then we'll subtract. The square root of 9, we know. The square root of 9 is a 3. And then we leave that root 10 alone. So now, write what you think that should equal and see if that's what we have written down on the piece of paper. And if it's yes, then yeah, it's simplified correctly. If it's no, then you're going to say no, it's not simplified correctly, and you're going to write the right answer. So... Is that right? Does 3 root 10 minus a 3 root 10 just give us a root 10? Seeing some different heads shaking yes, some are shaking no. Victoria squinting. She's deep in thought. All right. What's 3 minus 3 just in general? Zero, right? So wouldn't this be a 0 root 10? If you look at this problem here, if it's ever just written like that, that is telling you that it is implied there is a 1 right here. So is a 1 root 10 the same as a 0 root 10? No. So that is not simplified correctly. This, this would actually be okay. If you put a 0 in front of it, I would probably take that. But when it becomes multiple choice or something, I would definitely write that as a 0 because anything times 0 is going to be a 0. So just be careful of that, and that's why we do that, to make sure we understand. If there's nothing in front of it, put a zero. If you don't write anything in front of it, it's implied there's a one there. All right, last thing. We actually did this a little bit yesterday. Uh, when we multiply radicals, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. So notice how the five and the two are not underneath the radical. You're going to multiply those two guys together to get a ten. And then notice what are underneath the radicals, the 3 and the 7 are. So we can multiply those together to get a 21. But since those were underneath the radical, they need to still stay housed underneath the radical. We have to keep them there. However, we now know that those can sometimes be simplified further, correct? So if I now go tr to try and simplify a root 21, the only way I can get a 21 is with a 3 and a 7. Is 3 or 7 or either one of those a nice perfect square? No. So we don't need to go any further. That 10 root 21 would be our final answer. We couldn't break that down anymore. However, in the next one, if I take the numbers in front, so the 4 and the 5, to give me a 20, and then if we take the numbers that are underneath, the 6 and the 2, to give us a 12, make sure the 12 then has to stay underneath, We've already simplified 12 once or twice today. That can definitely go further. So the 20 we're going to drop. And the way that we can get 12 with a perfect square is with a 4 and a 3. If you want to show that extra step, feel free. But hopefully we are understanding. All I'm doing is multiplying together a 20. And then we know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is a 2. So that's really just 20 times 2, which is 40. And then the root 3 we leave alone. Last one. Go ahead. We've got four minutes to do this. So see what you get there. See what we can come up with. I think that's the last one. <laughs>
see what we got. The numbers in front were the two and the three. You can multiply those guys together. They don't have to go underneath the square root because that's not where they were at originally. The numbers that were under the square root were the eight and the five. So when those get multiplied together and give you a 40, those need to remain underneath the square root in the next step. 40, a rather large number. So then we wanted to search, is there a perfect square that will give you 40? All right, there definitely is. Should be a four times a 10 would give you 40. I'll show that middle step just to make sure I'm not skipping too many things. This is really then just a six times a two. And then the root 10, there's no way we can break that down any further. So if you get 12 root 10, then you got through that fine. Hopefully we're understanding how we can break those down a little bit more. And for one of the few times we actually finished without having to rush and jump through everything. That's all the notes from this section. So like I thought, and the homework should be also pretty quick. Get this one done for tonight. That's the one from yesterday, if you haven't already uploaded it. And then this is the one that's going to be due for Monday. You can get this if you don't have the packet. If you just click on this, the assignment is embedded in here. No, it isn't. I'll put it in there right now, but it will be there. Uh, if you go to your modules, it's also underneath what we just did. Get it up. So 3.3 was the notes, and then this is going to be the homework if you wanted to get it there. So it should be in both of those locations. All right, with that, have a good weekend. Another week down, and we will see you guys on Monday. All right, have a good weekend.